Today, we're gonna to be talking about my personal timecode system. It's the system that I've taken overseas to use on documentary projects, use it on network TV shoots, use it on numerous client pieces. I've got this wonderful Excel spreadsheet here comparing four different timecode systems. I did a ton of research before I spent my own money on this timecode system, and that system is the Deity TC1. If you've ever used timecode before on set or heard of timecode, it's absolute magic. It's a beautiful time saver for your post-production process. It adds this level of professionalism while you're on set. It's just a dream to work with. Your team loves it. It's really one of those things that you don't necessarily think about until you get your hands on. That was my experience. As soon as I started using it, it really changed my entire workflow. So today we're gonna to be talking about what I was looking for in a timecode system and the process I went through to land on the Deity system. So we're gonna run through that and then I want Hey, so as I've been editing this piece together, I realized it was getting way too long just to do one video. So we're splitting it into two videos. This week's is going to specifically be on my process of choosing a timecode system. We're gonna walk through that. And then next week's video will just be about how I've implemented the Deity timecode system into my workflow and into everything that I'm using on set. So make sure you subscribe to get next week's video as well. And thanks for watching, enjoy. All right, so my Excel spreadsheet here is looking at four different timecode devices, the Deity TC1, the Tentacle Sync E, the Ambient Locket, and the UltraSync 1 system. You can find a link to this Excel spreadsheet in PDF form below if you want to look at everything that I was looking at when trying to find timecode system. First thing on the list for me was the battery life. I frequently find myself working on documentary sets where I may not be able to charge batteries after every shoot day. So I wanted something that could last at least two shoot days. Lucky for me, all four of these could last at least two shoot days. This one, it's rated at 28 hours, the DDT C1, but almost every single time I've used it, the little battery indicator at the top has said 30 hours. And that's something that I really liked about these is that it has a battery indicator. The tentacle sinks are rated up to 35 hours and the ambient locket system takes an NPF 50 battery. You can run it over mains USB-C power or swap out that NPF 50 battery. So the locket system was great. Having the most longevity, you could just have a pile of NPF 50 batteries and just keep swapping them out. The next main thing for me was having an LCD display. The reason this was so high on my list is one of the timecode systems that I'd used before investing in the TC1 was the tentacle sink E. I really enjoyed the Tentacle Sinky. It's a small unit, their app is fantastic, but I really didn't like not having an LCD screen, especially when you're working on set, you've got multiple different Tentacle Sync E's running around, you gotta figure out whose phone is synced, you gotta figure out which E you're working with. The LCD screen just takes away all of that. I can go through every single setting that the DDTC ones have, is it the master? Is it set to jam and lock? Is it just set to jam continuously? What's the frame rate? What unit is it set to? So you have multiple different channels that you can set it on. So if you're running two camera crews in the same location that are both using TC1s, you can set one to A, one to B. There's tons of different channels. You can change the output level of the timecode signal, be it LTC output or audio output. All of these things for me were huge on set. I really needed to be able to change all this from the device and not have to find my phone and not have to worry about another device that has to have a battery charged at all times. So for me, that was a huge thing. The DDTC ones, the ambient lockets and the UltraSync ones all have an LCD screen and you can set up the entire device from the device itself. That was a huge thing for me. All right, next thing on the list is size and weight. The TC, everything is pretty much the exact same size. The tentacle sink is the smallest. Everything is really close in size and they're all super light. Obviously the ambient locket's gonna weigh a little bit more because it's got an aluminum chassis. So it's a little bit more rugged, a little bit heavier, but everything is really tiny, really light, really small. This is my AirPod Pro case here and this is the TC1. So it's really a tiny unit and it's not adding a ton of weight and bulk to any rig, even when you start factoring in multiple different units. So the next thing on the list was unit cost. I knew I wanted to get a system that was high quality and was gonna last and obviously do the job, but I knew I didn't wanna spend like full on big budget Hollywood prices on a timecode system. So 
All of the systems were relatively inexpensive compared to what you can spend on a timecode system. However, the TC1s were by far the least expensive out of all of them. You could get three TC1 units that include cables for $550. That's $100 less than just one ambient locket. Of course, ambient lockets, are a, they are a professional level system that you could easily use on a set. Very rugged chassis. They also have Genlock and Word Clock. Beautiful system, not knocking it at all, not saying it's not worth that price. But for me, that was just biting off way more than I needed. The Deity TC1 comes in at $183 per unit when you purchase the three unit kit. Three unit kit being $550, also comes with a three-way USB-C cable so that you can charge all three units at the same time and three different sync cables, a three and a half millimeter to three and a half millimeter, three and a half millimeter to BNC and three and a half millimeter to Ari Alexa timecode sync. So you're getting quite a few cables in that kit as well. These come in at $200 per unit. So that is the replacement cost if you broke a unit. So for me, that is incredibly inexpensive, especially considering how feature rich the unit is. But the main thing isn't necessarily just the unit cost, it's also the cost of all the accessories like the cables. The Deity TC1 and the Tentacle Sync E both use a locking three and a half millimeter cable for all of their timecode delivery. So three and a half to BNC or three and a half to Limo, whatever that may be. Whereas something like the Ambient Lockets are using a five pin Limo out and the Ultrasync 1 are using a DIN out, and those cables are significantly more expensive. You're looking at $50 to $60, as opposed to $20 to $30 per cable. And cables are the things in a timecode system that usually get the most beating. They're the things that are getting thrown around. Whereas these little three and a half millimeter right angle to three and a half millimeter right angle, you can get them for $10 on Amazon, which is fantastic. That leads us into the ecosystem as a whole. Because like I said earlier, when you're not just buying a timecode box, you're investing usually into an entire system. Tentacle has their track E, which is a lab that works with all their timecode stuff, but they really don't have anything beyond that. Ambient, of course, has all of their pro level smart slates and other ambient nanos. Ultrasync was one that I also heavily looked into because the Ultrasyncs work with the Atomos Connect. There is some Bluetooth air glue time code that you can do with the Nikon Z9 and the Nikon Z8. You can also Bluetooth sync with the Ultrasync Blue with the Zoom F6 and the Zoom F8N Pro if you have the Bluetooth module and the Zoom F2BT. However, that ecosystem is fairly expensive. To get the Connects is $500 per Connect for the Atomos. That also includes having to get more Master Caddies because the Connect is not compatible with the Master Caddy 2, so I'd have to replace all my Master Caddies. And it just ended up being the snowball effect that, that got really expensive and wouldn't necessarily allow me to use the timecode boxes with other systems unless I bought three Ultrasync 1 units. And so then the cost just kept snowballing. And so that wasn't an ecosystem that I really wanted to invest in. So for me, the DDTC1 had the best ecosystem moving forward. They have the TCSL1 timecode slate. I got to use that a couple weeks ago on set. Although I don't necessarily need a timecode slate right now, it was fantastic to be able to use one and know that that is a wonderful timecode slate. They also have the soon to be released wireless system that will also be compatible and jam with their timecode system. So DD had the ecosystem that I would want to invest in moving forward that I knew I wasn't going to regret later on. And the last thing was I needed whatever unit I purchased to be able to do audio timecode and linear timecode. The only one of these devices that can't do audio timecode is the ambient locket. Really the only difference between audio and linear timecode, linear timecode is a line level signal and audio timecode is a mic level signal. So if you're recording into like a mirrorless camera or a DSLR or something like that, you're gonna send that in as audio timecode. It's a much lower signal. Even with the attenuator in these cameras, it's not enough to pad the signal down to run a linear timecode signal in without distorting it to an unusable level. So I needed something that could do both audio and linear timecode. The TC1s, the Tentacle Sync E's, and the Ultrasync can all do audio timecode and linear timecode. So considering those six categories, really the only unit that was gonna work for me was the Deity 
TC1. You may have some different needs that may push you towards different devices. So for me, the TC1 was the one to go. If you want to download my Excel spreadsheet that kind of has some of the information comparing everything, like I said, link in the description below for that. So I wanna hit on a couple of the cons of the unit really quick. Not really any cons per se that have and maybe dislike the unit, but maybe some things you may want to be aware of as a consumer. The first thing being the battery. Two of the units in this list, the Tentacle Sync E and the Ambient, have either replaceable batteries, the NPF batteries on the Ambient lockets, or the Tentacle Sync E doesn't have a like onset changeable battery, but it has a user serviceable battery. So you can buy a new battery from Tentacle Sync and replace the battery inside your Tentacle Sync. Didi hasn't said whether or not they're going to have a user serviceable battery for the TC1s in the future, but if that's something that you consider like waste, for example, of purchasing one of these and then just basically having to throw it out as soon as the battery dies, that would be a big consideration for you. So something that's mildly irritating, but for me, the, the pros of it outweigh that. No Genlock in this device, obviously not a con for me. I don't need Genlock, but that is something to consider if you do run like live production stuff where you do need Genlock. These devices don't have Genlock or Word Clock. It is a plastic build, and if you're just holding the unit in your hand, it feels fairly solid. But when you're handling other things like the metal construction of the Ninja 5 or the mostly metal construction of the Zoom F6, you do start to realize that this is a plastic build and it's it's a little flimsy. I've I've never felt like I'm gonna break it. It, it. There's nothing that like feels like it's flexing or moving, but you can definitely tell it is a plastic build, whereas like the ambient is an all aluminum construction. And the last thing on here, which we'll get into detail later, is the scratch mic on this thing is absolutely terrible. It works if you just need scratch audio to sync in case an audio recorder fails or something or the timecode fails. The the mic works. It gets sound in, but it's terrible. All right, so that was the process I went through to land on the DAD TC1 system. I've been using it for quite a few months now and I absolutely love it. It's been a fantastic system. So if you have some more questions on timecode or my timecode system or anything that I was looking at while going through to look at timecode systems, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I will be doing another video in a couple weeks about timecode in general. What's, you know, timecode, genlock, word clock, how do they all work, all of that. I'll be doing that in a couple weeks. And the next week's video will be all about implementing the DAD TC1 into my system and my workflow. So make sure you subscribe to get those future videos and we'll see you next week.